Hey everybody, this is Randy with Carchaeology, and I wanted to do a little video talking about the elusive barn find. I get a lot of people that ask me, hey, how do you find all these cars that have been hidden away? Um, and so I figured it might be worth doing a little how-to video, so to speak, of how to find derelict cars and what to do with them. Um, now, everybody's got their own technique, but I, I'm going to share a few of the tips and tricks that I've learned over all the years that I've been chasing cars. But first of all, what is a barn find? I mean, I know this term gets thrown around very easily to any car that's been sitting for any longer than about six months. Um, and that's okay. I mean, yeah, you can argue about the type of structure it was stored in, but that's kind of against the whole point. I mean, the whole thing, the whole allure of a barn find is to find something, a car that has been locked in time, that needs to be rescued, something that has been sitting dormant uh, for however many years, the longer the better, the dirtier the better, uh, but it's, it's about finding that stray dog and bringing it back. So it doesn't have to be in a barn, it could be in a garage, it could be in somebody's backyard as far as I'm concerned. The term barn find is a good way for all of us to search, uh, find videos, find other things, find information, and to share our finds with everybody else. So even though you didn't find it in a barn, I think it's okay to call it a barn find. So where do you look for a barn find? Well, of course, barns are the romantic place that you think you could find something. And you can freestyle and stumble into something like that. Um, but that's a hard way to go. But a lot of people love to do that. And I think that there's a lot of great tips on how to increase your chances of actually snatching something out of a barn if you're out there driving the country roads and freestyling. Um, one of the tips that I've found is if you are driving an old car, that starts conversations with everybody everywhere you stop. And those conversations are what will lead you to discoveries. So if you stop to get gas in some small town and some guy comes up and comments, hey, nice car, uh, don't just say thanks and leave it at that. Fire up that conversation. Say, hey, are you around from around here? Uh, do you know of anybody that's got old cars like this? Uh, those sort of leads are fantastic. And everybody you talk to, ask them. You're never going to find something if you don't ask. Oh, you might, but, you know, you want to be invited onto the property if you can. You know, doing trespassing, hopping fences, peeking in people's barns. That's a good way to get in trouble. You might find something, but you might also find yourself on the wrong end of a shotgun. So talk to people. If you're towing an old car on a trailer, if you're driving an old car, that helps. If you see somebody in town that has an old car, talk to them. You know, as car guys, we all stick together. So if you're a car guy in a town somewhere, you sure as heck know where there are other ones. So ask. Always ask. But if you're not able to find anything freestyle, then the world is open to you with every other possibility. In fact, it is easier to find a barn find car now than it has ever been in history. So for all those guys that say, oh, all the good stuff's been found, that is absolute BS. There are cars being parked today that'll be discovered 10 years from now. It's a constantly renewing resource. Barn finds will never stop. You hear me? They will never stop. So anyway, if you can't just stumble into something, you can sit with your coffee and your computer and find all sorts of interesting stuff. Search all the local classifieds, look at Craigslist, look at Facebook Marketplace, offer up, uh, look in all of the different uh, forums and things and groups on Facebook for different cars, and you will see a ton of cool old stuff that pops up for sale. Now, one of the tips that I use when I'm searching for stuff online is that instead of searching for a particular car, I search for a particular situation. I do search words, keywords like sitting or parked 
or grandpas or dads or something like that that might key me into a car that's been sitting for a long time or parked for a long time or something that belonged to somebody's father or grandfather that has passed away. And those are great ways to find stuff. Now, another thing when it comes to online ads, a lot of times when people are listing these old cars, especially if they've inherited them, they really have no clue what these things are worth. And they may think they're worth a ton of money. They might put a price that's really high. Now, with the ease of online ads and communication and the way that it's all structured, anybody that has anything advertised for sale is getting hammered with complete idiots that are offering half of what they're asking and so on and so forth. So don't do it. Don't play that game. If you see something that's advertised for 10 grand and you send an email or a message and say, would you take 2,500? You're an asshole. Got it? Don't do it. But that doesn't mean that these high prices are ones that should scare you away. In fact, if you kind of read into it or you start up a conversation with the seller, you may find out that they really don't have a clue and they know they don't have a clue. One prime situation or an example for you is some time ago, I saw an ad on Craigslist for a Model T Ford. It was a basic Model T Touring. It was sitting outside. It was covered in leaves, all sorts of stuff. And the guy wanted $17,000 for it. It's not worth $17,000. But I could tell by the way that he wrote that ad that he had no clue what it was he was selling. He had the year all wrong. He had the model wrong. The way that he described it definitely told me that he was not a car guy and he didn't know what he had. But I kind of looked at it and I saw some other cars in the background and I thought, this one, this one sparks my interest. So I contacted the guy and I got on the phone with him and I asked him the story. And apparently these were cars or, well, this car was a car that belonged to his father that had passed away and he was trying to sell it. And that conversation opened up that there were other cars there on the property. There ended up being a couple of Model Ts. There was a Model A that it turned out to be an amazing find because it was a vintage hot rod that was done in the late 40s. Uh, but the asking price normally I think would scare people away or it would incite people to email them and tell the, and with people telling them, hey, you don't know what you're asking. You're an idiot. It's not worth that. Don't do that. The nice guys win when it comes to these sort of negotiations. And the best way to negotiate is right there, face to face, with cash in your pocket and the ability to get the car out of there. And that's another extremely key factor on being the guy that finds these cars, or better yet, the guy that gets to take them home. You got to get off the couch. and You got to go right frickin' now. If you see a car that looks interesting to you and it's stirring up those juices inside and you're thinking, oh man, what could I do with this? This really seems like a deal. Get off your butt and go. The first guy to get there often takes off with the car. So don't lose it. You can't snooze. Uh, let's see, other tips. Oh, attitude. Attitude is everything. Going back to the way that you communicate with people through their ads or on the phone when you talk to them, you got to be kind. You got to be enthusiastic. You got to be caring. You got to listen. And if it's an estate sales situation, you got to crank the volume up on all of those things and be really compassionate, really listen to what's going on. And often these are people in a fragile situation where they lost a loved one and they're given the task to find homes for these things that their family member loved dearly. So if you can show that you will love it dearly and take care of it and respect its history, that plays an awful lot into them choosing you to be the next caretaker. It definitely helps to build trust. Don't go in there like a bull. Don't pick the thing apart. Talk about the good stuff. Ask about the stories behind it. And the stories are another extremely important part of car hunting 
that I think a lot of people miss. Now, if you're a fan of my channel and you watch what I do, you can tell that stories are a big part of it to me. And maybe it isn't for everybody, but I've got to say that the story can add so much value to a classic car, it'll blow your mind. A prime example is Mog the Manx, the Myers Manx dune buggy that we just sold at auction for over a hundred thousand dollars. This is a fiberglass body on a Volkswagen chassis, people, a hundred grand. Why? Because of the story, the documentation, the photos of the car being built and being used back in its heyday, the receipts that all came with that car, the catalogs for the parts that were ordered, on and on and on and on. So if you find yourself in a situation where you are in front of an original car or something that has been in long-term ownership, your chance, your window of opportunity to get that information and get those photos is really small. And you gotta push for it. You gotta ask the family to look through photo albums, find old pictures of this, of this car, whatever it might be. Look through the file cabinets in the house. Find old receipts, find old paperwork. You might get lucky, find an original window sticker or a build sheet if a car was so equipped. The more documentation you can get and the more story that you can get behind the car, not only does it make it more exciting to own, but it also makes it more exciting and more valuable to somebody to pass it on. So please take your time and ask those questions. Go along with this seller, ask them for the stories. Where has the car been? Uh, what do you remember about the car? What was the funniest thing that happened while you guys were driving this car? All of that stuff is an immense blessing, not only for the new owner of the car, but also in stories that you can share with somebody when you go to sell it. And sharing is caring, right? So when you have that information, continue to share it with people. I do that with, through my videos. I do that through signs and stories, magazine articles, anything I can do on a car. If I can share the story of where it's been and give credit and pay respects to the previous owner, that's something that is a feel good thing for everything, for everybody. It doesn't cost you a nickel, but if a family member reads an article or sees a video where you're talking about their father who had departed and thanking him for being such a wonderful caretaker of this vintage automobile and, and really be gracious and thankful to be the next owner, all of that stuff is huge. And I see that play in my favor a lot through people that have watched my videos that have then sold me an automobile. Duck the Beetle was a prime example. These folks watched the videos. They saw that I'm really passionate about these cars. And more importantly, that I care about where they come from. And I care about where they go after they leave my hands. So definitely do that. Um, let's see, enthusiasm, kind, caring, build trust. We did all of that. Where to look? Everywhere. Oh, and finally, if it's meant to be, it'll happen. You can't catch every car. You just can't. And don't get angry if you don't. Don't try to beat out somebody that is there ahead of you. Don't try to offer more money than the guy in front of you. Don't try to steal it from anybody. Don't try to steal it from the sellers, pay what's fair, step up, don't be a hard ass, be a nice guy. And if it's meant to be, it'll be in your garage. Anyway, that's my quick rundown on barn finding, a couple little tips and tricks. I think I had everything on my notes here. I probably missed a couple of things, but hey, what do you want for nothing? In any case, good luck with your hunting and searching for vintage automobiles. And if you have any tips or tricks, please put them in the comments here so other people can read it as well. And thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Please share this video and keep on digging them up and driving them. Bye-bye.